Hello, this is John Kitchener, personal color and style consultant, speaking to you from my office near Atlanta, Georgia. I've just completed another virtual color analysis for a client who could not be with me in the office, but we did, did the consultation by uh, digital photos she sent to me. And uh, it's an amazing palette. This is really, really incredible. Uh, this is a very large, very vast, very diverse palette. Uh, she came to me by courtesy of my co-author, Andrea Flommer. Andrea wrote the book, Shopping for the Real You. It's a wonderful book, wonderful amount of information and content, plus a wonderful list of shopping stores, where to go to find your particular personal style. Anyway, she, the client had been so frustrated and Andrea said, go, go see John, he even will do a virtual analysis for you, which I have done. Um, she had been, oh gosh, named so many different uh, types and seasons and, and color, this cool, that warm, this. And it was so frustrating for her. And she said, I know that by going to see Andrea, Andrea, who has such integrity, would send me in the right place, and she will be very, very happy with this. Uh, this is part one of the process for her. Uh, this is the color part, the custom color analysis part for her. The second will be determining her style essences, and that's a blend of qualities too, not just one category, not just two or three, but she'll be, a, um, it's multiple choice for style. And uh, she's gonna find that ab absolutely remarkable and wonderful too. The thing is that you're focusing your wardrobe, your personal style, your natural expression in this way. So these are laid out. These are, first of all, these are fabric samples. Uh, our company has been around since 1964 and we've always used fabric. Fabric is the best way to determine uh, a person's color harmonies and the qualities that go with their skin, hair and eyes and bone structure. And it's you would never want to go to somebody who gives you paint samples or paints you a palette. Um, the, the idea about paint samples is that they're too flat. They don't give enough depth. What if the person has a, the potential of doing a lot of corduroys and velvets? That depth of velvet and corduroy would be lost in paint samples. So don't go to someone who has paint samples. We have an enormous, we have thousands of fabric samples, and this range is probably around 150 swatches right here. This is a personal custom palette. This is the way colors have, should always be done. These are currently laid out according to stronger down to quieter. Um, the reds and the power colors are similar. They're a little different in communication. The colors that are the most contrasting with her complexion would be the power colors. And in this case, it began with a green. Even though she has a lot of green in her eyes, the green elevated the brightness level of her skin tones. And as you went down to teals, into turquoises, into blues, and finally almost royal blues, the direction goes from stronger down to quieter. So she'll know what kind of impact to create when she wears a certain color. Most of the brighter colors on this upper part are for blouses, for a man it would be for a tie, uh, but, it, but again, this is an order of strength. This is her range of romantic colors, it is the reds. She has fairly middle tones of red, somewhat pink, somewhat coral, a little bit on the brick side in here, and from the reds you can almost determine how cool, how warm, and how light and dark the palette will actually go. Next down the line would be the playful colors, which are the sporty colors. These are lighthearted, fun colors. They're usually on the lighter side. It began with these leaf greens, um, these light sky blues that actually go slightly periwinkle, but just barely. Very warm yellows, in this case, very sunny, sun-drenched yellows. And she has a beautiful range of oranges that go from a peach into a kind of a, oh gosh, light turmeric kind of color. And this range are quieter still, and these would be the sophisticated colors. Um, it starts in this case with the blues. Now, the indicator of the blue here and the blue here indicates that she cannot go to purple blue because of the warmer tones that are in her skin. Um, when a person who has warmer uh,
tones in the skin tone, the purple blues will have a tendency to make it look muddy, uh, yellow, orange, and various different effects. So there was a stopping point where the colors uh, were going to start shifting her skin tone, and that's not a positive uh, expression at all. Then come the red purples, the purples. Again, the purples are all pretty much on the red side, even though she has a bit of a lilac color here too. And the last range here where she goes with orange again, um, this is an orange that goes up into an almost pumpkin pie kind of color. And again, these are all elegant or sophisticated colors. These are great in dresses. They're great for going to a wedding. Um, if you wanna be present, but still be in the background, these are excellent supportive kinds of colors. Now, she has what we call hazel eyes. Hazel eyes are interesting in that they can be a variation of, off, of often um, orange brick or rust mixed with variations of green. Now, in trying the different ranges of colors on her as I was going through and picking her eye color, she actually has four pages of eye colors. This is a record. Usually, I think I've done maybe three or four people that have four pages of eye colors. It's very, very, very rare. The idea of wearing your eye color is a calming, peaceful, trustworthy, compassionate effect. So we call these the calm colors. I began with a green, then it goes a little bit more yellow. Then the yellow goes into a, a kind of a golden straw color. Then it's in these beautiful, again, dark pumpkin pie colors. And so this is the center part of her, part of her eyes. There's some middle areas of her eyes that go to the gold and then the green continues the predominant color that's in her eyes. So all of these worn in different amounts, they could be worn as a scarf or a blouse, they're great for going for an interview if you don't wanna threaten your interviewer. Um, these are, are wonderful, gentle, calm communicators. This range of colors uh, is often seen as, seen as an alternative to black. And what we've got are, the, these are called understateds, and it begins with this interesting range that goes from plum to burgundy to soft rust to almost an, um, oh gosh, kind of an amber color. It's a beautiful uh, fabric to it, it's a suede. And then we've got these beautiful gray blues. This could be a, a denim color for her, and it goes right up into a kind of a teal. And that teal or seafoam continues into these beautiful greens and down into a kind of an olive uh, but still rather leafy and not really uh, military green. Another range of neutrals are these two here. These are the browns and the beiges. These are interesting. They go from cocoa to very deep brown, out into taupe, into um, kind of a light camel, into lighter beiges. Black was just not all that positive on her, and I think black is so overused and overworn anyway that she could go back into her deep greens, her teals, her deep blues, in her dark plum burgundy as an alternative to black. So I did give her, give her a warm charcoal color and it goes, these are actually warm and middle grays. They're not particularly blue based grays. Um, they're wonderful. And uh, they would be conservative colors used for suits, jackets and coats. And then finally she has white, which are basically cream whites that go to antique white. And they are for half body amounts which is a blouse, a jacket, a skirt, or pants. Not to wear white in large amounts, it would weaken her. The last page over here are her medals. And uh, I tried the copper, the brass, the rose gold, the yellow gold, and the silver and platinum for her. And silver and yellow gold work the best, and I gave her these paper samples. Um, I actually use a, a whole range of actual true metals. Uh, to hold up to the client's complexion to determine, and these are just references. So at the end, what we do is we look at the overall color harmony. Harmony is a very evolved place. It's not a season, it's not a type. It's again, something that's very unique and uh, intrinsic to the individual. And so the color harmonies here are Overall, there's a lot of white mixed in, into her colors. There's a lighter, brighter quality to the colors. And yet there's a good third or even perhaps a tad more than a third that has an earthy quality to it. And then there's just a 5% nuance of coolness and subtlety that just softens the colors ever so slightly. Um, we give percentages and those percentages are also related to the client's bone structure. So we have found that colors and bone structure 
or face shape are related. And that's quite a fascinating topic and worth exploring in, in the future. But based on her features, bone structure, and colors, her palette has a little bit of a 5% what we call subtle blended, 35% earthy rich, but it's predominantly lively bright. Uh, again, there's no harshness, no intense deep jewel tones in this palette. Um, it's incredibly diverse, and I can see why other consultants would have called her an autumn or would have called her a summer or would have called her this or you're warm and a lot of confusion, unfortunately. So this is a incredible spectrum for her to use the rest of her life. And uh, her name is Anne, and we could say this is now Personal Style Anne. And congratulations for doing this. It's gonna save you so much time and money when you shop. It's the greatest tool that anyone could ever have. Thanks again.